ਰੱਖਣੀ गुड मॉर्निंग सर भंडारकर सर शुरू करो या ओ सर शुरू करा ओके सर थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल आपली व्यवस्था झाली असेल चालू करा ओके गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर टुडेज फॅकल्टी डेव्हलपमेंट प्रोग्राम आई एम डॉक्टर विनय धोंडगे प्रोफेसर आझाद कॉलेज ऑफ एज्युकेशन सातारा एंड कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ दिस फॅकल्टी डेव्हलपमेंट प्रोग्राम वेलकम यू ऑल today we have with us professor dr k m bandarkar national president council for teacher education foundation ctef principal dr sanjay kumar secretary general ctef delhi ncr resource person dr tania gupta all the resource persons of ctef delhi ncr principals of teacher education institutes teacher educators research scholars and students from all over india thank you for taking time out and present here for this online fdp today dear friends we know that india has one of the largest and diverse education systems in the world privatization widespread expansion increased autonomy and introduction of programs in new and emerging areas have improved access to higher education at the same time it has also led to widespread concern of the quality and relevance of higher education to address these concerns the national policy of education npe 1986 and the program of action 1992 spelled out strategic plans for these policies advocated the establishment of an independent national accreditation agency once in quickly the national assessment and accreditation council that is nac was established in 1994 as an autonomous institution of the university grants commission with its headquarters in bangalore the mandate of nac as reflected in its vision statement is in making quality assurance an integral part of the functioning of higher education institutions taking into consideration this quality aspect in teacher education institutions we have organized this national fdp in collaboration with council for teacher education foundation delhi ncr chapter i am thankful to principal dr sanjay kumar secretary general ctef delhi ncr and principal saraswati college of professional studies gaziabad for his whole hearted support to organize this webinar on behalf of ncef delhi ncr i am going to extend your schedule in short after this introductory talk principal dr mrs v s nalawde ma'am will address the gathering followed by keynote address by professor dr k m bandarkar national president ncef and then followed by today's resource person dr tania gupta once again i welcome professor dr k m bandarkar professor satyendra ji gupta chairperson ctef delhi ncr today's resource person dr tania gupta dean school of education k r mangalam university gurugram ncr principal dr sanjay kumar principal dr mrs vandana nalawde azad college of education satara and all the respected resource persons along with all the participants from all over india today in all more than 1100 participants are there in this faculty development program i welcome you all once again in this national faculty development program and request of principal dr v s nalawde madam to address the participants 
डॉक्टर नलोड़े मैडम ओर टू मैम थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम वन एंड ऑल इन द एफ टी पी ऑन नैक एक्रेडिटेशन फॉर टीचर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन ज्वाइंटली ऑर्गेनाइज बाय काउंसिल फॉर टीचर एजुकेशन फाउंडेशन एनसीआर चैप्टर एंड आजाद कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन सतारा ऑनरेबल नैशनल प्रेसिडेंट सी टी ई एफ एंड टूडे चीफ गेस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर के एम भंडारकर सर चेयरपर्सन सी टी एफ दिल्ली ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर सत्येन्द्र गुप्ता सेक्रेटरी जनरल सी टी एफ दिल्ली एन सी आर चैप्टर डॉक्टर संजय कुमार टूडे रिसोर्स पर्सन फॉर फर्स्ट सेशन ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर तानिया गुप्ता एंड ऑल रिसोर्स पर्सन ऑल सी टी एफ डिग्नेटरीज कॉर्डिनेटर ऑफ दिस एफ डी पी प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर विनय धोनगे आजाद कॉलेज ऑफ students and friends i welcome all of you on behalf of raj shikshan sanstha and azad college of education satara it gives me great pleasure to introduce raj shikshan sanstha satara and our college raj shikshan sanstha satara was founded by late padma bhushan karmavir bhavrao patil in 1919 is one of the leading educational institutions in asia the value of this uh, its contribution to education in general is enormously great as it has from from very beginning tried all its best to lower who really formed the major bulk of society man of masses who devoted all down trodden people there should not be a village without school and a school without a trained teacher this was the ideal the founder of rest cherished and earnestly struggled for throughout his life he sincerely believed a teacher from masses who knows knows the rural community with all its ills can effectively teach the students belonging to the rural areas to solve this genuine problem of getting trained teachers for the primary and secondary schools which he started in his nooks and corners in remote areas of maharashtra for the education of masses he started training colleges uh, that is bed and bed colleges now raj shikshan sanstha has celebrated centenary centenary year in 2019 we have 776 branches all over maharashtra and karnataka out of this senior colleges are 42 for women out of them are four senior colleges attached to junior colleges are 26 451 secondary schools out of which secondary school attached to junior colleges are 198 teacher training colleges that is bed colleges uh, are seven out of that one is for women primary schools 62 out of english medium are 28 pre pre primary schools are 47 out of them 29 are for english medium we have 91 hostels out of that 35 are for girls seven administrative offices uh eight ashram schools the iti and 57 other branches one research institute we have uh, total 776 branches of rajshikshan sanstha divided in five regions central southern northern western and raigarh region so we have reputed institution in maharashtra and uh, india now about our, our college azad college of education satara is one of the most reputed teacher training institutions established in 1955 by respected karmavir bhavrao patil to fulfill fulfill the basic need of trained teachers it is located at the foot of historical fort ajinkya tara uh, the aim of opening this college was to provide the competent devoted and committed generation of trained teachers ready to work in remote area it is one of the reputed college that is in maharashtra having the tradition of qualitative teacher education the to commemorate the memory of late honorable maulana abdul kalam azad the first educational minister of government of india the college was renamed as azad college of education in 
our college was affiliated to pune university in 96 up to 1961 and from 1962 it is affiliated to shivaji university kolhapur we have two divisions that is that is we are having 100 students intake our college has been reaccredited with a grade in nine, in 2020 uh, 12 we have submitted tchr accreditation report to qci in 2017 and now we are preparing for accreditation by nac azad has a enriched library in shivaji university area we are also having enriched resource centers committed faculty with seven research guides so thank you this is about our college thank you for giving opportunity over to donge sir okay thank you ma'am one announcement is there due to some technical problem we are not able to go live on youtube but within 5 to 10 minutes we are going to solve that problem so till that time please have patience and uh, ask your friends to wait for a while so to move ahead i am going to introduce today's keynote speaker doc professor dr k m bandarkar sir is national president of council for teacher education foundation which is registered ngo similarly sir is reviewer for the marathi vishwakosh that is encyclopedia a project of government of maharashtra vice president of the maharashtra chapter of the indian association of life skills education similarly apart from this sir is ex principal of punjab bhai patel college of education gondia maharashtra he has been principal for a tenure of 29 years similarly sir is ex director of nagpur region region of Ma yashwantrao chavan maharashtra open university nasik ex dean faculty of education rtm nagpur university nagpur ex member board of studies faculty of education senate academic council and management council of rtm nagpur university similarly sir has worked on various academic and statutory bodies of the several universities of india as far as research is concerned sir has successfully supervised more than 200 md and mphil dissertations recognized phd supervised for four universities number of phd awardees are 20 similarly sir is examiner of phd thesis evaluation of 26 universities in india as far as authorship is concerned sir has written more than 15 books in marathi hindi and english on vital subjects like population education environment education psychology competitive examinations similarly uh, statistics also sir has organized five national level and 17 regional level conferences delivered keynote addresses in 20 national conferences participated and presented papers in several national and international conferences as far as social contribution is concerned sir has delivered several motivational lectures in social programs working as national trainer for value education program of dharma bharti mission and working as director of a project for school children as far as awards are concerned sir has achieved best author award for from ashwantrao chavan maharashtra open university in 2005 bharat gaurav award of india international friendship society in 1998 Excellence in Teacher Education Award of Council of Teacher Education 2006. National. Of, uh, uh, in example, for example, uh, between 1845 to 1851. National Integration Fellowships of Maharashtra Patrakar Sangh 2007. Ideal Principal Award of the RTM Nagpur University 2014. Similarly, M B Butch Gratefulness Award of the Maharashtra Teachers Educators Association 2016. so with this i uh, conclude sir's introduction and request sir to delight the gathering with his auspicious words over to dr professor k m bhandarkar sir thank you sir thank you very much good morning to all of you i feel very much privileged to join you in this inaugural session of the national faculty development program on nac accreditation organized by a very reputed institution 
Azad College of Education, Satara, in collaboration with Council for Teacher Education Foundations, New Delhi NCR chapter. First of all, I would like to pay my rich tributes to the founder of Rajat Shikshan Sosta, Karmavir Bhaurav Patil. And as Madam has already mentioned, the society is running 776 institutions. So one can imagine the work of Karmavir Bhaurav Patil for upliftment of this society. Learn while, earn while learn. This was the concept which was introduced by Karmavir Bhaurav Patil. He was a true Karmavir as per definition given in the Holy Gita. Uh, friends, after DAV, Raya Shikshan Samstha is the biggest educational society in India and for that matter in Asia. So this is actually a great pride to the state of Maharashtra to have education societies like Raya Shikshan Samstha. Let me congratulate Delhi NCR chapter its chairman, my friend, Dr. Satyendra Gupta, sir. Then again, a very close friend of mine, Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, sir, secretary of the Delhi NCR chapter of the CTEF, Dr. Pachori, sir, assistant secretary general of the national body of the Council for Teacher Education Foundation, principal of the college, Dr. Vandana Nalade, madam, Dr. Vinay Dhonge, sir, coordinator of the program. Dr. Anil Kumar Gagre, sir, coordinator of the IQAC. Dr. A.B. Patil, sir. Dr. Tanya Gupta, madam. Dean School of Education, KR Mangalam University, Gurugram. And uh, I am sure the resource person like Tanya Gupta will be a great help to all of us, all friends and well-wishers of the Council for Teacher Education Foundation. Friends, CTEF, previously it was Council for Teacher Education was established in 1985 by a great educationist Dr. G. Chaurasia, who was the only Indian to become chairperson of the World Council for Curriculum and Instruction with headquarters at New York. He was actually director public instructions, government of Madhya Pradesh. He was founder principal of the Regional College of Education, Mysore, then Regional College of Education, Bhopal. I have been his student, he was my guide. So that way I am very lucky. And let me pay my rich tribute to my guru and founder of the CTE, Dr. Gulab Chaurasia, sir. Friends, this type of FDP was definitely a great requirement as far as accreditation of NAC is concerned. You are all aware that our colleges, our teacher education institutions were accredited by NAC previously also. And I can recall the format which was prepared at Baramati, probably in the year 1997. And at that time, principal of our college, regional college Bhopal, was chairman of the NCTE and my friend, Professor Prem Ahuja was chairman of the NCT WRC. And we were all there in Baramati. And that format we were following 
for many years meanwhile our accreditation work was actually allotted to qci quality council of india and many colleges have submitted their reports and they have also paid their fees for accreditation and what has happened to that process i don't know but somehow again the accreditation work of tei is undertaken by nac bangalore that is actually a very good sign and friends actually a revised schedule if you go through the booklet which is published by nac and that is actually runs in 124 pages and uh, it is my humble opinion that any institution any tei which is preparing for accreditation should first of all refer that manual that manual is of great use at the outset some objectives are given and definitely those objectives are objectives of nag and they have tried to make the accreditation process ict enabled that is already written there they have considered three aspects general teacher education physical education and special education and their main objective is to bring professionalism in teacher education well that is again objective of nct also and if you look at the vision mission and core values these are actually very helpful to us also quality indicators are given at this whole manual is divided under three sections a b c actually a is guidelines for assessment and accreditation b is self study report ssr how to prepare ssr and section 3 is appendices so what i feel if you look at the objectives to stimulate academic environment uh, as soon as we go through this objective uh, so we have to recall what we are doing what our institution is doing to propagate educational environment so that is to be there to encourage self evaluation accountability autonomy and innovations in teacher education accountability then again university is also stressing on the accountability academic audit is also there then as far as autonomy is concerned uh, this is actually prevalent in karnataka in maharashtra we are having very few autonomous institutions but in the times to come we have to go for autonomy that is the only way and if we go for autonomy then our responsibility multiplies at least 100 times because if there is any problem if there is any fraud in examination then the institution will be held responsible not the university not the examining body not nct not nag it is the sole responsibility of that institution to maintain the quality otherwise what will happen once the institution earns bad name it will be very difficult to come to that problematic situation to undertake 
quality related researches uh, previously in last month i had been to one of the reputed university in meghalaya and what i have seen there uh, some 60 or 65 students presented their phd topics problems they have undertaken for conducting research for the degree of phd and uh, what i found there was repetitions and repetitions all topics were stereotyped so innovation is very important quality related researches are to be conducted if we really wish to improve the quality of teacher education only stereotype of researches will not help us to collaborate with stakeholders that is again our weak point to collaborate with other agencies to collaborate with government agencies non government agencies teacher organization student organization and social organizations also so that is there that has to be followed i would like to only submit that this booklet of 124 pages is a nice document everything is given there i don't think there is any need to ask anyone what to do everything is absolutely clear and if we read the criteria quality indicators we will know that what we are expected to do as a teacher education institutions what are our duties as a teacher education institution it is not that we were not doing all these things we were doing most of the things but they were not systematically arranged most of the times we failed to keep records photographs videos so that was lock lacking and we also failed in publication of the, our documents also that is also there so that has to be taken care of and what i feel if one goes through this criteria indicators then it is very easy to prepare ssr that is my opinion and as you know most of the stress is given on student evaluation how the students are evaluating our institution yes that is true quality is never decided by the producer quality is never decided by the distributor of any product quality is decided by the consumer quality is decided by the stakeholder so that has to be kept in mind मेरा कॉलेज है तो मैं तो कहूंगा कि बहुत अच्छा कॉलेज है लोगों ने कहना चाहिए कि ये कॉलेज अच्छा है दैट इज द बेस्ट इंडिकेटर ऑफ क्वालिटी एंड वी शुड नेवर फॉरगेट दैट मैं एक ही प्रसंग आपको बताता हूं और आपका फिर समय नहीं लूंगा एक शहर में नैक का एक्रेडिटेशन था एक नैक मेंबर जो हमारा साथी है उसने बताया तो संडे का दिन था दूसरे दिन जिस इंस्टीट्यूशन में जाना था उस इंस्टीट्यूशन को उन्होंने संडे वहां से निकले बाहर से और रुके उस इंस्टीट्यूशन के सामने गेट बंद था चौकीदार खड़ा था उससे उन्होंने बात की कि भाई ये कॉलेज कब खुलता है वगैरह तो उसने इतने अच्छे से बात की उसको कुछ मालूम नहीं ही वॉज नॉट नोइंग एनी थिंग तो उसने बताया कि सर ऐसा है आपका स्वागत है आप किस काम से कहा जा रही है तो मैं नहीं जानता पर आप बैठिए हमारा हमारे साथ बैठिए चाय पानी की व्यवस्था मैं करता हूं और आपकी क्या सेवा कर सकता हूं ये बताइए एंड दे वेर इम्प्रेस लाइक एनी थिंग द होल कमिटी वॉज इम्प्रेस लाइक एनी थिंग लुक एट द वैल्यूज ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन कि जहां का चौकीदार इस प्रकार से बात करता है सो एवरी पर्सन शुड बी ट्रेन प्रॉपरली दैट इज द की टू सक्सेस मैडम नोज हाउ टू गेट ये ग्रेड 
for institution so we are lucky to have persons like her associated with this fdp i extend my best wishes to all of you and uh, if you go through the questionnaire given at the end of that booklet some 17 questions are there 17 questions are there and uh, that indicates what our institution is doing and how students are expecting things from us so there that gives guidelines actually everything is given only matter is to understand that and to prepare ssr accordingly i am very much thankful uh, for the organizers uh, who have invited me uh, to be here with you to interact with this august gathering uh, friends our organization is open to all and in assam state we are having chapters at district level also and we are having 23 chapters in india state chapters then union territory chapters and we again have chapters in bhutan bangladesh nepal usa and uk also we are uh, going to open chapter in singapore in near future everything is okay there so friends, uh, you are, I, I am here to invite you to join our organization and contribute your knowledge, your skills for the betterment of education through this national and international forum. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I congratulate the organizers for arranging, for organizing this wonderful program. And my best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of Azad College of Education, Satara, as well as uh, uh, Council for Education Foundation, Delhi and Sir Chapter, I'm thankful to, uh, Professor K. Bhandarkar for his uh, valuable keynote address and also sir has focused on the importance of the NAC accreditation process for the teacher education institutions as well as the importance of autonomy. Also sir has focused the quality research and uh, how we have to take the research with uh, uh, the society. Thank you once again on behalf of uh, Azhar College of Education Satara Sarji. Also Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Also, I am very thankful for the Professor Satyendra Gupta Sarji, Chairperson, CTF Delhi NCR Chapter, uh, for his uh, valuable guidance, as well as uh, I am thankful for the Principal Dr. Sanjay Kumar, Secretary General, CTF Delhi NCR. Uh, also, we have with us uh, today's resource person, uh, Professor Dr. Tanya Gupta, ma'am, all the resource persons of CTF Delhi NCR principles of teacher education institutions all over the India, teacher educators, research scholars, and students from all over India for the inauguration session of the seven days FDP uh, on NAC accreditation process. So once again, thank you all of you for this uh, uh, inaugural session. Now, without wasting the time, we uh, move towards the next sessions. Today, we have a uh, next sessions regarding the NAC accreditation process. And for this session, uh, we have with us Professor Dr. Tanya Gupta. And uh, let me take this opportunity to introduce the ma'am over here, Professor Tanya Gupta. Uh, she has, she working as a Dean School of Education. Also, she has the additional charge as a Dean Student Welfare and Dean School of Humanities, KR Mangalam University. She has served as a principal Army Institute of Education, Greater Noida. Also, uh, regarding her literary contribution to the field of education, she has been the founder editor of various journals of education, annual magazines, and newsletters of institutions. She was the teacher representative of MIT International School, Delhi, for writing textbooks and developing learning material 
for school children under the aegis of MET Educational Resource Center. Also, MAM has conducted several, several interactive sessions with teachers and uh, postgraduate students, workshops on research methodology. There are several research papers and book chapters published to her credit. She has also developed self-learning material on pedagogy of social science. Ma'am regularly presents papers in both international as well as national conferences on education and in related disciplines. Her research interests include higher education policy, economics of education, educational reforms, teacher education, inclusive education, and civil law. So without wasting a time, uh, I request to the ma'am, uh, Tanya Guptaji, a very versatile and experienced as well as the intellectual personality we have with us for the today's session. So I request to the Tanya ma'am to please enlighten us regarding the NAC accreditation process as well as the criteria number one. Over to Tanya Gupta, madam ji. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sir, bahut, bahut shukriya. Uh, I am uh, very, very happy to be a part of uh, this FDP. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me uh, congratulate and thank uh, Azad College of Education, Satara. Uh, we are today amidst a, a pioneer institute of education, which is uh, A grade. It is re-accredited as A grade. Uh, and I must appreciate the effort of the college for uh, organizing this national level FTP on NAC accreditation for teacher education institutes because uh, you are yourself an example, a living example. And I'm sure uh, with the speakers that you have invited and uh, the experience of uh, Dr. Vandana ji, who's the principal of Azad College of Education, and uh, Dr. Vinay ji, who's the professor at the, at the college and he's coordinating this FTP. I'm sure uh, we are going to come out with very valuable outcomes of this national level FTP. I would like to uh, pay my reverence, my Regards to Professor K.M. Bhandarkar, Sarji. Uh, sir, good morning. It is, uh, sir, always... Very, very good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Namaskar, sir. Uh, it, is, uh, it is he who is uh, so beautifully, you know, putting us as a pearl of string with his vision, with his passion and his dedication that we are all getting you know into a family of lifelong learners and through the council for teacher education foundation under sir's presidential uh, guidance across india and in the countries that you have heard of we at the delhi ncr chapter under uh, the chairmanship of Dr. Satendra Gupta, sir, and our Secretary General, Dr. Sanjay ji, we are able to meet so many teachers, teacher educators so frequently. So I'm so happy and thank you, uh, uh, Professor Bhandarkar, sir, and Professor Satendra, sir, and Dr. Sanjay, sir. And to all the dear colleagues and friends who are here as participants, uh, I'm very happy to be with you. Sir ne bhoomi ka bhoat ahem bhoomi ka bandhi hai apni presidential address mein. And sir needs no book. He doesn't need any PowerPoint presentations. It is sir's experience. His experience because uh, how the teacher education institutions have been working, some and most as philanthropic organizations, and then with certain forces of globalization and liberalization, things turning more commercialized also, and mushrooming growth of teacher education institutions, 
but then yes there have been attempts of quality check the topic uh, on which we are going to engage in discussion today uh, is very vast there have been two things that have been assigned and i will try to be uh, though i can be very elaborate but i will try to be as brief as possible because there are two things to be covered first is the accreditation process the the basic process of how we go for the accreditation and then secondly the first key indicator uh, and the criteria one which is on curricular aspects so uh, firstly i will move on so we will move on with the assessment and the accreditation process so as i was mentioning that actually the mushrooming growth of teacher education institutions in our country due to various reasons uh today we are at a point where the N the nep the national education policy 2020 is skeptical about the quality of teacher education institutions where uh it pains me as a teacher and as a teacher educator when policy documents that are there in the public domain mention that teacher education in the country is been given at substandard level or 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 at a level uh which is not of quality and especially under the purview of this substandard quality of education are stand alone institutions we must be familiar that now the national education policy 2020 has said that the minimum qualification for being a school teacher will be having a four year integrated program teacher education program with a bsc bed or a ba bed and this will be the basic qualification of course this will be done in a phased manner so quality has to be a way of life nac is nothing but quality i like to compare it with an example that when we go to a grocery shop jab hum ek shopping mall mein jaate hain to kisi bhi product ke bahut varieties humme milte hain but how do we certify that this is a quality product so we go by certain parameters or we look for a isi mark likewise for for things which cannot be touched which are not tangible which are not in the form of objects but they are in form of services or they are abstract it is very difficult to be objective and come out with quantifiable quality parameters so the topic that you know we are going to try to touch today as i just said is firstly trying to understand how is this assessment and accreditation process done and then let us try to see how we can through curricular aspects or criterion 1 of the nac see that we are delivering quality through our curriculum
now the national assessment and accreditation council nac what is its main work its main work is to check the quality status of the institution it will assess us on certain indicators what does it check us on it checks on our routine processes our educational processes how are those processes being converted into measurable outcomes the curriculum the teaching learning process the profile and the quality of faculty in our teacher education institution the research what kind of research is going on in the institution by the teachers and even by the students maybe through small research projects or some field projects but primarily it is looking into the kind of research of the teachers the infrastructure that caters to a good learning environment for the future teachers of the country what kind of learning resources are we providing to them how is the governance the management the policies the staff welfare schemes the student welfare schemes the democratic way in which the students are given participation the formulation of committees like the icc or the guidance cell or many many more such uh, essential committees now we also have the institutes to have a committee for the interest of the divyangjan so many more things the financial well being because we know that we can deliver all the above if the finances or the financial stability is there of the institution and the performance is also checked on the student services what kind of student support are we providing to the existing students and how we are linking them to the alumni so over the days all these uh, things will be discussed in the fdp one by one dear friends what is the benefit of taking an accreditation so as our president sir had also said that it is important because it gives you a face people or the stakeholder judge us as an institution the first place where you know if any child wants to take admission or any parent wants to select your college they will visit your website they will visit your newsletters they will visit your brochure or they will visit your your college in person now just like i gave the example that when we go to a a shop or maybe to a mall to buy anything we check the packaging we check the packaging the packaging tells us that this is isi mark so i should buy it of course it is a different altogether view that sometimes packaging is good but the product that comes out within may not be very very qualitative that's a different aspect but by and large on the basic parameters that product is certified as quality product likewise when a student or maybe any stakeholder as you can see on this slide whether it is when i say society it can be anyone in the society the student the parent the alumni the governmental organizations the non governmental organizations the employer 
all of them will see us for our quality standard. And this is the most important reason why every teacher education institution or every higher education institution in the country must undergo this NAC process. It is also important that once we are NAC accredited with a good grade, it will give us a mirror view of our strengths, our weaknesses, the opportunities where we have to improve and the challenges <coughs> which we may be facing. As you can see, it is called the SWOC. So the NAC team also tells you after you know the whole so after the whole process is over, NAC also gives us the what is my view. See, many times I will say that my strength is very, I am very good at one thing, I am very weak at one thing, or I may say I am not weak at anything at all. Because most of us, it is very easy to find strengths in oneself, but we do not want to find our weaknesses. We sometimes are not able to express our challenges. So this is an exercise which gives us a mirror view of where we are. And it also helps us to take and plan forward. How I can increase my strengths, how I can reduce as an institution my weaknesses, what opportunities I should bring into my teacher education institution for the welfare of my students, my teachers, and my overall existence as an education organization. It also will provide us a way forward for more innovation. So the more, the better we are in grading, the more we will, because it is never, you know, you are accredited B plus, next time you would like to go for A. You are A, you would like to go for A plus. So it's always there. You are always going better. And therefore, the accreditation process will also help us explore things which we have not done before. Also, the one of the most important benefits of accreditation is that it enables you because you are considered as a quality organization, teacher education institution, it will open doors for funding. We can undertake research projects, minor projects, major projects. We will get funding from government organizations. We will get funding from corporate or non-governmental through extramural funding. So many ways, the benefits of accreditation are bountiful, many. As <clears throat> Professor Bhandarkar sir had said in his inaugural address, NAC has certain core values. It has a vision, it has a mission. Why am I showing this slide today is something very important. NAC looks for these five core values in any teacher education institution or any higher education institution as well. Because today we are only discussing for teacher education institutions but we must understand that it is also for the other higher education institutions like institutes, universities or autonomous colleges or medical institutes, etc. So five core values. Whatever we are doing, <coughs> whether it is through curriculum, through our teaching learning processes, through our research, the idea is it should contribute towards the national development of India. 
secondly we have to develop amongst our students global competences we are today in a space which is connected through the world web the internet the ict the technology artificial intelligence so are our children are our teachers if if we talk in context of teacher education institutions are they being prepared for global educational institutions do they have those competencies and skill sets this is the second core value which every higher education institution should try to promote as per nec third an individual who has the content has the competency but no value system is a failed individual there is no use of an education there is no use of a competency if there is no value system in fact sir just gave an example that how the guard of an institution they don't even know what may have happened in the institute but it is that guard one person who demonstrated the value system of that institution so how are we doing this amongst our students is the next core value also the use of technology and as i say quality is a way of life if all these processes become a way of life they become a part of us we will reach towards excellence we will reach to that seventh criteria of institutional distinctiveness or best practices you don't have to think of your best practices it will come immediately automatically if these five core values are kept kept in mind now the revised accreditation system which is there as again i will uh, quote sir's address that we had these processes where uh, teacher education institutions were first assessed and accredited by nac and then we had the qci most of us as teacher education institutions registered for it and then it it went down somewhere and then you know we were told to take back the registration amounts that we had done and we should not let's get into that why it went away but finally today we are back with nac accrediting us as teacher education institutions now the nac the earlier nac framework of a and a which we call as assessment and accreditation framework was uh, was having certain limitations there was too much of focus on subjectivity in 2017 a paradigm shift in the processes was made and that was make the process more ict enabled it should not have too much of uh, subjectivity or the human element because there were a lot of questions on how nac is also accrediting the institution so they 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 felt that we should make it more ict enabled software driven uh and this would make it more objective more transparent and more robust and so this 2017 a and a framework that we are following now please understand 70% of scoring is done through system generated scores 
वॉट एवर आई विल फीड इन द डेटा टेम्पलेट provided by the nac nac will get that scoring done for me so this is very important it is only 30% of evaluation that will be done by a peer team which will visit in case of teacher education institutions for two days they will only come to validate whatever we have you know written we will see it further the the qualitative aspects that we have written that they will come to verify but 70% of data report they will come with it they will read it and they will come on ground to us and this is through the system generated scores now nag does not do this scoring it has made it more objective and transparent by giving this data which we feed in in the template this data is validated and verified by a third party so so nac uh, cannot be said that there has been some manipulation they have made it very objective and they have also made appropriate differences in matrices the weightages and the benchmarks so it will be different you cannot put the same metric the same benchmark for an autonomous college and an affiliated college or a medical college and a teacher education college or in among all this at a ug level college or a pg level college and the benchmarks cannot be same the weightages cannot be same for a university and a college so nag has tried to you know make it more specific to the variety of higher education institutions that are there in our country today and one important change is that they have tried to enhance the participation of the various stakeholders as sir had mentioned quality is not decided by me as an organization it is decided by the stakeholders to whom i serve and particularly the students and the alumni so these are certain differences which have uh, come in in the revised process so what is the eligibility for an assessment firstly if it you are a college like all teacher education colleges one they should be affiliated to a university recognized by ugc and if the college or institution is not affiliated to a university but it should offer programs that are recognized by the statutory professional regulatory councils which have been recognized by the association of indian universities so in case of teacher education general teacher education programs it will be the ncte for the special education programs it will be the rci or the rehabilitation council of india so these are two things which should be kept in mind also any institution which is applying for reassessment or subsequent cycles what is the eligibility so supposing as a teacher education institution uh we have submitted our documents we had a team which came to us and it has given us a grade we are not happy with that grade we are not happy with the accredited status they have given and we want to improve it so in that case the eligibility is you can apply for a reassessment after a minimum of 1 year and before 3 years of accreditation subject that you fulfill all conditions that have been specified by the nac from time to time so one option available is of reassessment and there is a fee which one has to pay 50000 for this and this can one can apply for this but it has to be minimum after one year and before 3 years of the day you are accredited as the teacher education institution secondly is once you are accredited and you want to go 
for subsequent cycles. We should go for subsequent cycles of the accreditation, like cycle two or then cycle three or cycle four. Then in that case, the institution six months before the validity period. So say for instance, at present in July, some teacher education institution is getting over with its validity of first cycle of NAC. It should now, it should have applied by January, in fact, before January last year for the second cycle. And it has to go through the process of the same process of accreditation once again. So we will see that process also. Now, for all types of teacher education colleges which are offering these programs, whether it is preschool or Montessori teacher education programs, uh, which are diploma certificate or institutions uh, which are offering early childhood care and education or elementary teacher level programs like DL ed, which is a two year diploma or a four year BL ed program or for secondary teacher education, which is two years B.Ed. after graduation or an integrated four year B.Ed. which is after plus two. So if your institute is offering these programs or combination of these programs, one can and one should go for a NAC accreditation. So what is the assessment process? Step one of the assessment process or the first phase hai, uska jo pehla charan hai, wo ye hai, ki aap apna khud apna assessment karenge. You know, like as teachers, we all know that by the end of an academic session, we all have to fill our performance appraisals. So we first fill a self-appraisal form. We rate ourselves, we score ourselves, which is then quantified or checked with documentary evidence by our senior officer, our HOD, our principal, who validates the self-assessment. And then based on that, it goes to the management committee, which will then finally, you know, uh, based on that, promote, or it will give some incentives, or it will also decide our continuity in the institution. So likewise, even NAC says, give us your self-assessment. And this is given through the first step, which is called the report, the SSR or the self-study report. Second important component is they will take a student satisfaction survey. That is the second component, very important component, which we all have to take care of. And that is the student satisfaction. And then third is the peer team visit, which will come and assess us for two days. Now the SSR metrics, the self-study report metrics for a teacher education institution have seven criterion. These seven criterion cover 32 key indicators known as KIs. Each of these key indicators will have some metrics. And in total, we have 127 metrics for teacher education institutions, which we have to, we have to self-assess ourselves in the self-study report. Out of these 127 matrices, 82 are quantitative matrices denoted by QNM as you can see, and the remaining 45 are qualitative matrices denoted by QLM. These are, sorry, these are the seven criterion which we are going to discuss every day in this FTP. The seven criterion for So, if you please have a look very carefully, we 
in the previous slide we introduced certain terms one was a uh, criterion second was key indicator third was metric and among the metric there is some weightages given to each metric and each key indicator so in criterion 1 which is curricular aspects that we are discussing today this has four key indicators 1.1 curriculum planning it has three matrices and the weightage is 25 1.2 is on academic flexibility there are five matrices in this key indicator and the weightage is 40 1.3 is curriculum enrichment there are three matrices in this weightage is 25 and 1.4 is feedback system where there are two matrices and the weightage is 50 so the total weightage of criterion 1 is 105 in the ssr and we have to self assess ourselves on four key indicators and 13 matrices so just an overview the second criteria you can just see i am not going much in detail i am sure other other speakers will pick it up day wise the second criteria has 360 weightage which is on teaching learning third criteria on research and outreach has a weightage of 100 and it has 14 matrices criteria 4 on infrastructure again has weightage of 100 with 15 matrices criteria 5 on student support and progression has 13 matrices and you will be weighed and weighted on 115 points and then governance leadership and management 120 is the weightage and institutional values and best practices 100 is the weightage so the, so the total score for the ssr on which an institution will be assessed and accredited is 1000 as you can see through all these slides the most in for a teacher education institution the maximum score is for criteria 2 360 is the weightage and then followed by 105 for curricular aspects so when you visit the website of the nac you will find these flow charts that are given how the process is to be done i will go very fast on this you can also find the video tutorials which are there on the nac website certain key key terms that we have to familiarize ourselves is first is the iiqa iiqa stands for institutional information for quality assessment then the second term is the ssr known as the self study report third is the dvv or the data verification and validation fourth is sss or sorry there is a mistake i have made here it is student satisfaction survey student satisfaction survey fifth one is the peer team visit or the ptv and then there is another term which you will find in these flow charts is aqar which is annual quality assurance report so now this what is this first flow chart showing us it shows that when we want to get accredited the first step is we have to register on the portal of nac we have to register online after we register online we will submit to the nac our iiqa iiqa gives the basic institutional in information what are the programs you are running which year you started what is your status in the ugc uh, are you an affiliated college so 
Uh, what is the, and the reference they use is the IISH data, the All India Survey for Higher Education data. That reference is required to log in and register. After the IIQA is submitted, and for this, uh, teacher education institutions have to pay 25,000 fees plus 18% GST. This is non-refundable. So after you register, you submit the IIQA, pay the fee, non-refundable fee of 25,000 plus 18% GST and submit this form. NAC will get back to us in two ways. One, either it will accept the IIQA submission or it will ask you to resubmit. They have found that there is some lacuna. They will ask you to resubmit. So for resubmission, it will not charge, NAC will not charge us any other money provided we go for, you know, two more submissions of IIQA within one year, within one year from the date we have filled the first IIQA or filled the first submitted the first IIQA. Let me repeat. When one is IIQA is accepted and the second it, it is, it says, NAC says resubmitted. So you will not be charged any additional amount, but you will be given a chance to resubmit IIQA twice within one year from the first submission. However, if we fail to do this, the entire IIQA submission fee of 25,000, which was non-refundable, it will lapse and you will have to go for a fresh registration and IIQA submission. So very important key point here is that deadlines have to be kept in mind. Now, if the IIQA was accepted, then what is the next step? The next step is we have to submit the SSR or the self-study report within 45 days of the IIQA acceptance, which means do not go for an IIQA submission till the time your documents and data is nearly ready or your SSR is nearly ready because 45 days, you know, is not a very major gap, not a very major time gap. So. Only submit when your SSR is near completion for submission. So SSR will be submitted within 45 days. And then simultaneously, whatever data we have put in the SSR will be uh, the process by third party validation. DVV process will start. In the meantime, uh, NAC will also take the student satisfaction survey. And if it gives you a green signal, it is says, okay, right? Then you will be considered as pre-qualification step is over. You have qualified for NAC peer team visit. Now, the fees which is attached with the submission of the SSR is different and then it is given in the manual initially for the IIQ is 25,000 and then after that 1 lakh plus 18 percent GST and then another 50,000 I think which is there for teacher education institution. So all these payments also have to be made timely. So one key takeaway for us is that please adhere to the timelines of the NAC accreditation submission process. That is very, very important. Now, after the, the pre-qualification is okay, the peer team will visit. There are some logistic charges for that also, which the NAC has enlisted. The peer team will visit us for two days. Please remember that the pre-qualification of the SSR, which comes through third party, is only through the for the quantitative metric. The NAC peer team will come and assess the 
qualitative matrices of the SSR. And then after that visit, they will give us a grade and then we will get a credit. What if there is a case, if you have a poor grade, I've already said you can go for a reassessment or you can go for appeal process with a 50,000 of uh, fee that you deposit and you go, can go for a reassessment process or you, if you are not qualified, you have to start the process again. Once again, you have to start. And if you have successfully got a grade, the first thing you have to do is you have to establish an IQAC, internal quality assurance cell, and you have to every year submit the AQAR, the annual quality assurance reports till the next cycle of accreditation. So I'm not going much in detail through one flowchart I've tried to explain. There are many flowcharts like this, how you will register, how you will submit the IQA, IIQA process, how is the SSR to be submitted. And dear friends, if you go to the NAC website, you will get video tutorials also for this. So all this process is very simple if you take the help of the video tutorials. The DVV process, how it happens. So step by step, everything is explained. And then how the student satisfaction survey process will take place. This is also explained. Now, I would like to focus here about a minute on this student satisfaction survey. It is mandatory for all higher education institutions to display on their notice boards this poster, which is uh, given out by the NAC. It is available on their website because the students must know that the system is transparent. It must give the students the power that this is a very democratic functioning and your, your views are very important to improve the quality of this institution. See, as you can see, the poster gives such powerful words to the student, rate your institution, suggest the improvements. And it also gives the student the, the uh, you know, it, it maintains its confidentiality. It says your identity will not be disclosed because one potential fear that students have that if they, if they rate the institution the way they feel or they rate a teacher or they rate the infrastructure in which they feel, it will affect their complete stay in the college or uh, the teacher education institution. So this kind of a, uh, you know, it, it says that we will randomly select students and we will keep your identity confidential. Now for this step, it is very important. There is a template which <clears throat> the NAC will give us and it will say you have to at least upload the details of 50% of your currently enrolled citizens. So if I have I'll give a very basic example. If I have 1,000 students in my college, see I have 100 students in my college, then at least I must facilitate data of 50% of my students who are currently enrolled, either in BA first year or BA second year. We have to be careful that the names of the students should not be repeated. It is not allowed. So 50 means distinctively each student has to be different. There can be no repetition. Third thing what is important is you have to keep in mind that total entries should not be greater than the students marked in the IIQA. Supposing in the IIQA you have said that I have an intake in BEd for 100 and present my admission status is 80. So if you have 80 students on roll, you cannot give the data for 85. The entries cannot be more than the number of students which you have marked in the IIQ. With single program, it is easy, but when there are more programs, one has to be very, very careful uh, that it cannot exceed the strength of the student. It is not the intake. It is the actual strength which we have filled in the IIQ. 
uh, this uh, student satisfaction survey will be done by NAC simultaneously with the DVV process and it will be completed within 30 days. So what does NAC do? Out of this 50%, minimum 50% uh, students data that we have given, NAC will randomly pick up uh, through the system some students and give them a questionnaire. Okay, and what is this for colleges? Uh, what it will do is it will try to take data from at least 10% of the students. At least 10% of the students. So this questionnaire has 20 objective type questions and one subjective type question. These questions are available. After the FDP is over, I will give it to uh, principal madam. I will give her this folder for the ease of all the participants. You can, dear friends, Please give a practice to your students to answer this student satisfaction survey. Now, I don't mean you teach them how to respond. I mean that when you are taking a feedback from the student throughout years, try to use the same kind of questions in your feedback system. It is like preparing the student one way, it prepares the student to answer this questionnaire, they, they are familiar with the words. They know how they have to answer. Another important thing is if year by year, you are going to take the data on this kind of a satisfaction survey, it will give you, rather than at the end, uh, no student knows the questionnaire and rates us poorly, it is better they rate us internally and we improve our practices. So that by the time the next uh, this SSS, by the time the NAC SSS is done, uh, it is not a discouraging or a sorry state of affairs for us. So the principals of the school, the HODs of the departments must familiarize the students with the SSS. It is very important. So this poster should be there on prominent notice boards. Now, one more important thing which I want to tell here is regarding researches, what kind of researches that we are doing. Uh, the validation of the research impact or the bibliometric data is uh, given by NAC to InFlipNet, which checks whether the data that we have submitted Say I say I have published a paper in quartile two of Scopus. It will check on the Scopus site whether this paper is there or not. So the validation will be done through InFlipNet. Now there is one notice which I want to share, which has just come out on this 27th of May. And this is for all institutions, whether it is a university or it is a college, or it is more specific to us like a teacher education institution. Publication by the faculty will only be considered if it is in the UGC care list. Only UGC care journals will be considered for the DVV process. So one another key takeaway is please do not publish your papers in journals which are not UGC care. I hope we know UGC care list one is there and list two is there. UGC care one list are not indexed with Web of Sciences and Scopus and care list two are, uh, they are indexed with Scopus and UGC care. So this is one important thing we have to keep in mind. Publication without being in UGC care journal will not be considered by NAC. Okay, so these are the done. Now the peer team which comes to us after they are there with us, for two days to check on the qualitative metrics, they will prepare a report called a peer team report, report. And this will have four sections. First section will give the general information, what they found about the information. And they draw this out from the interactions with you and your SSR. So general information about the institution, what it is doing, what is its mission, vision, how it is working. 
then section 2 will give the criteria wise analysis of the qualitative indicators every criterion has some qualitative indicator so it is going to give a very descriptive qualitative assessment of the seven criterions of our teacher education institution under this it will tell for every criterion what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses so this will be section two section three will be it will give a overall analysis of the swap the strength of the teacher education institution its weakness its opportunities and its challenges and the fourth is it will give about i mean it, it limits that not more than 10 recommendations it will give how this teacher education institution and on what aspects can this teacher education institute enhance its quality so the peer team report will have four sections and second thing is after one thing is the peer team report which they'll give second is the report will also have a graphical representation of the quantitative matrices. This the peer team does not do anything. This it is a system generated quality profile, which the peer team will bring with it and it will give to us. Every metric, metric 1.1.1, 1.1.2, 1 1.1.3 1 and so on, it will give what is the quality profile. So it is statistically generated. And thirdly, it will give an institutional grade sheet. That is, it will tell you how you have performed on qualitative indicators, the quantitative indicators, and the student satisfaction survey. So all these three things, first the peer review report, the graphical representation, and the institution grade sheet is together known as the NAC accreditation outcome document. It is mandatory that this document is displayed on the institutional website of the teacher education institution for transparency to the stakeholders. So this is very important. Other than uh, it being documented wherever we are keeping it in files, no, it has to be put on the website. So. I have already covered this for cycle one, the process has been explained for cycle two and three. Uh, after two and three is done, we must establish an IQAC. We must ensure timely submission of AQARs annually. That means for if from cycle one to cycle two, we are going, we should have five AQAR from cycle two to cycle three, another five AQR and so on. Okay. So, uh, and one thing you have to keep in mind when the validity of the first cycle or the second cycle or any subsequent cycle is getting over, please apply and submit the IIQA during the last six months of the validity period. And then the whole process becomes the same as the first cycle. This is the institutional grade and accreditation status. So this is being uh, adopted and uh, you can see that one can secure grade from A double plus to C, an institute is considered as accredited and having a CGPA or a cumulative grade point average less than 1.50 gives you a letter grade D. And this means the teacher education institution will not be accredited. Uh, the SSR, moving on to the SSR, it has few sections. First section, if you will read, as Sir had also told, there is a manual. Please go through that manual. In the manual, the first part is executive summary. Uh, in that, you have to briefly uh, give an introductory note. Then, for all the seven criteria in not more than 250 words, give the summary. Then give the SWOC any additional information which an institution wants to give that has not been stated either in the criteria or in the SWOC. There is something which you want to give. 
which which is not covered maybe by the matrix of the nac or there is something which you feel is additional you can give that and an overall conclusive report or summary has to be given now this executive summary of the ssr should not be more than 5000 word it is something like you know when we write a thesis we give a summary an executive summary when we create a policy document we give an executive summary so it is the heart and soul of the entire the essence like when we talk of the constitution of india we write the preamble the preamble is the heart and soul of the constitution likewise an executive summary in ssr is the essence of the entire report so it has to be articulated very well based on the the data lot of people start writing the executive summary first that's a wrong way first work out on all these aspects the criteria your strengths weaknesses and then write the executive summary now the second part is the profile of the institution so these the these are certain data uh, which you have to fill and now there is another section 2a which has been added uh, in the ssr and is that what is the institutional preparedness for nep so this has to be given in a maximum description of 500 words there are headings under which you have to give your answer like how are you getting prepared for multidisciplinary curriculum how are you moving as a teacher education institution towards skill development of the student how are we focusing on giving the values and the indian knowledge systems to our student and uh, how are we looking into the academic bank of credits like credit transfer scheme of the student so this is this is given under section 2a the third section of the ssr is the extended profile of the institution okay again there is a the kind of template which is given there which has to be filled and fourth is the qif or the quality indicator framework which is based on all the different matrices so now i am quickly moving to criterion 1 as i said criterion 1 uh has a weightage of 105 uh and it has four key indicators first key indicator is 1.1.1 curriculum planning and the weightage is 25 under this there are these different matrices 1.1.1 1.1.2 okay you can see very clearly the first metric 1.1.1 is a qualitative metric most of the qualitative matrices have to be answered in 500 words okay 1.1.2 is a quantitative metric 1.1.3 is again quantitative metric then key indicator 1.2 is on academic flexibility this is the maximum weightage in criterion 1 so the metric is 1.2.1 quantitative metric weightage is also given 1.2.2 quantitative metric 1.2.3 quantitative metric 1.2.4 quantitative metric then 1.2.5 quantitative metric the third key indicator is 1.3 which is curriculum enrichment it has 25 weightage metric 1.3.1 1.3.2 1.3.3 1 1 this complete key indicator is qualitative and key indicator 1.4 is feedback system it has two metrics 1.4.1 and 1.4.2 now i am just going to uh please take you to the manual i think i have just about 10 more minutes with me as per time sir do i have 10 minutes more please madam take your own time no problem yeah, yeah. i want to please take take your own ma'am no problem thank you so because actually too much of coverage of material for me today no problem madam take uh, you can take more half an hour no problem please continue so i am just trying to yeah okay now what i'm just trying to do here is please i don't want to make it theoretical why i 
went through the slides very fast is because you will not understand the metrics from the slide so two things we have to keep in mind is the manual which sir was talking this is how the manual looks is the screen visible sir Yes, yes, madam. Yes, it is visible. Yes, madam. So this is the manual, NAC Institutional Accreditation Manual, and it gives you the guide how you have to prepare this self-study report. Okay, so largely whatever I have presented, uh, the source has been this manual. Now I want to tell you one one small way, and that is there are two documents which you have to refer. when you are working on every criterion and since today our our uh, criterion is one so so as i was telling you about the nep i, I since i'm i have just reached here you can see these are the questions you have to answer for nep these are the questions you have to answer for nep it is advised that every college establishes a committee for nep to answer these questions that is very important we should try to write these answers after we bring them into our practice and also consult our affiliating university on how to go about this i am coming to criterion 1 okay. this is on page number 57 of the manual criterion 1 uh i would like someone to confirm that when i am switching to the other booklet are you able to see this booklet yes ma'am it's visible both are visible yes yes okay so what we have to do uh esteemed friends and colleagues is in your college each one of you may be given by your principal the task or the responsibility to handle one criterion so the ssr should be read very carefully but should be read in light of the standing operating procedures there is another document which is available which is the standing operating procedures for dvv dvv means all the quantitative matrices the qm matrices they will be validated based on these sops so for instance in key indicator 1 curriculum planning as i said there are three different matrices here like 1.1.1 1. this is a qlm means qualitative metric this is institution has a regular in house practice of planning and or reviewing or revising the curriculum and adapting it to the local context and situation what does this question mean this is qualitative and it has to be answered in 500 words and 500 means not 501 it has to be 500 words so what is the process now for a college we know that our curriculum if we are affiliated to a university we have already a curriculum which is given by the university which is passed through its board of studies and academic council so you you may say that we don't have the flexibility i have seen lot of ssrs of teacher education institution which say Uh, it is not in our hands because the curriculum is given to us by the university 
but as teacher educators we know that curriculum is not only the syllabus it is also of the processes on how we give the situation or the content to the student through our pedagogical processes so in metric number 1.1.1 which is a qualitative metric it says what you have to upload you have to upload the procedure adopted or the periodicity or the kinds of activities so here you can simply refer to the curriculum of the affiliating college or affiliating university that when it was last revised that can be mentioned okay and you can also attach copies of the communications or the decisions how the university may have communicated it has communicated through its website it has communicated it through some email so whatever the decisions of curriculum revision or say if the university say is saying that we are going to revise the curriculum in light of the national education policy any kind of communication which is there from the university affiliating university or to us as colleges or through some meetings some minutes of the meeting those can all be uploaded and what were the issues that were discussed during this revision so lot of universities even call the principals of affiliated colleges or they send you minutes of the academic council meeting so all these can be uploaded as a support uh by the teacher education institution okay and then what has been the plan developed for the last completed academic year so last completed academic year is that if i am giving my ssr in 2022 23 then my last completed academic year is 21 22 so what was the plan of the curriculum development so most of the universities as we know have somewhere incorporated the curriculum revision in light of nep so you can add that then what has been the plan for mid course correction wherever needed for the last completed academic year so would anyone like to i have been talking since long uh, anyone uh, would like to please take an attempt what is this mid course correction kon kon sample hai anyone please would like to contribute what is this mid course anybody would like to contribute please there is a little disturbance if you type in the chat box please i'll see it from there i can see it from there because uh, yeah it is not i can't hear so uh okay so uh, you know there might be suddenly a decision which comes up nani ke liye pata nahi kya ho gaya okay han ji yes ma'am you want to say something okay so a mid course correction could also mean that suddenly say for instance due to some unavoidable situations or maybe some kind of uh, uh some new additions that have been uh, promulgated or some decisions have come and those you could not bring in the curriculum but then through some special uh meeting of and ho gaya you have been able to bring those amendments those also should be incorporated in this 1.1.1 okay so this is a qualitative metric which has to be answered in 500 words 
नेक्स्ट विल मूव टू मेट्रिक नंबर वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू सो वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू इज अ क्वांटिटेटिव मेट्रिक एंड इट सेज एट द इंस्टीट्यूशन लेवल द करिकुलम प्लानिंग एंड एडोप्शन आर अ कोलेबरेटिव एफर्ट indicate the persons involved in the curriculum planning process during the last completed year so it means that when you are as an institution when the university has given you a curriculum it has given you a maybe a syllabus with how it will be scored and what the students will be tested on how have you devised your practices your pedagogical practices okay through activities or through some projects or through some events or maybe through some kind of assignments or through some kind of sessions guest lectures or however you may feel so how have you taken the ideas of collaboratively evolving this curriculum by taking views of the faculty the principal the practice teaching schools the employers where the children in the past years your alumni have been already recruited the subject experts and academicians what is their view the present students and the alumni so it says you can indicate which one is applicable i would suggest we should try to take it from all these stakeholders the curriculum planning should be made a collaborative process now this is a quantitative metric so it says upload data as per template now please understand that wherever it says upload data as per template please go to the so and in the sop you can see that 1.1.2 it gives the documents required so if you say my students participated some subject experts participated then please list the pro, the persons who participated in the process of in house curriculum plan this is not university level planning this is in house curriculum plan also when you called them to participate in the process of discussions collaboration what was the notice attach the notice and the minutes of the meeting duly signed by the head of the institution and then also prepare a copy of the program of action on how this curriculum was adopted in the last completed academic session it is not asking you for 5 years it is asking you for the last academic session so why am i trying to highlight on this sop is how does the sop help us when you just read the manual you may just start filling any data but it is important for us to know that it has to be done as per this sop and if any of these things we are not doing then we should start the process because this is the data which will be required for third party validation now going to the next metric which is 1.1.3 while planning the institutional curriculum say if you have a bed program or a bled program have you done the mapping of the plos and the clos and have you communicated it to the teachers and the students through the website through the prospectus through the student induction program and in your orientation programs very clear first step in this is on the website host the program learning outcomes of bed program learning outcomes are nothing but graduate attributes what after the two year program of bed the student teacher will be 
possessing as a competency attribute or a professional skill attribute or as a value attribute or as a research attribute so you have to list these plos and map map each program learning outcome with your every course learning outcome now what is a course learning outcome like in bed you will have philosophical foundations of education sociological foundations of education contemporary india and education guidance and counseling life skills education you prepare the course objectives and you prepare the course outcomes the university gives this to us even if the university has not given it to us in house please try to develop that or communicate it to your affiliating university that this would be required so that they can get it appropriately planned and passed through their academic council generally it is there for all the universities but if you feel it is not there then this work should be done because this is a, a important metric 1.1.3 it is very important not only to display it on the website or show it in your prospectus okay it is also important that when there are new students coming to your college or a child moves from one semester to another the hods or the principals should ensure conducting an induction program where the students revisit the plos and the clos once again this should be on the tips of the students after doing this course what is the outcome okay as you know we are also following the locf the learning outcome framework so students should know what is the outcome of this course and how this course will prepare me for the employment or the world of work outside which is my graduate attribute i will not say only employment i will even say startups or entrepreneurship i may not like to work with i may not like to work with a school i may want to maybe open my own school i may not like to work in a school or open a school i may like to work in a e content industry so how is this course going to map with the bed program outcome or bled program outcome is very important if the teachers are not oriented about this they do not know what is the plo or the clo you cannot induct it to the student because it is actually the teacher who has to transact this and ensure this so very important under metric 1.1.3 now what does it say please refer to the sop for this it says you have to provide the url of the page the website page where you have listed these plos and clos clos you have to also attach the prospectus of the last year as a documentary evidence then report and photographs with caption and date of the induction program and report and photograph with captions of the teacher orientation program so if we are not doing this we must start doing this because nac is all about documentation it is all about quality process so if we are not doing it we should start doing this and the practice will be easy now one thing i want to add here is about the photographs which they mention so in this sop only you can see they mention about photographs that are geotagged okay the photographs have to be geotagged that is why they are asking for geotagged photographs for multiple purposes but it also tells you whether that event has happened on that same day or not because just by attaching the photographs one cannot verify the date and the location so so all photographs for nac should be geotagged and geotagging has to be done with these parameters in mind okay all this has to be kept in mind now going to metric 
1.1.3. Now 1.1.2 key indicator 1.2 academic flexibility. So 1.2.1 is a quantitative metric. Weightage is nine, and you can see. Does the curriculum provide adequate choices of courses to students as optionals and electives? This is the metric. So we know in our curriculum, which is so brilliantly designed actually by the NCTE, we have a lot of optional elective courses, which the framework has given. But sometimes colleges, because of lack of number of teachers, they will say we will not offer all the electives or the optionals for various reasons. Though, of course, there is a kind of a standard benchmark, which will say, minimum number of students are required to run an optional elective. But this metric 1.2.1 says, in 1.2.1.1, it says the number of electives that have been offered during last five years and number of electives, including the pedagogy courses. So. Yeah. So in this metric, basically, you have to list the optional and the elective subjects and the pedagogy subjects like teaching of English, teaching of Hindi, teaching of home science, teaching of uh, regional languages. So all these have to be uh, put in in this metric. Now, if you see the SOP. One point two point one. If we see the SOP, you have to attach the circular of the university showing duly approved list of optionals, electives, pedagogy courses, and you also have to give the academic calendar for these courses, okay? But it is also giving you a scope. So it is not a problem that if an approved curriculum of the university gives you 10 electives or 12 pedagogical courses, you have to offer all of them. Next is you can offer them according to the availability of the teachers available in the institute. So these are the documents that are required. Next metric is on. Now there is a formula also uh, because this is quantitative. So you have to also keep the formula in mind. Why this formula is helpful is because if you want to score better, actually you should increase the the number of optionals and elective courses and pedagogy courses in your institute. It is up to the, the management and the leadership of the teacher education institution that how they can see that they get a good percentage score in this metric. 1.2.2 is value added courses. How many value added courses has the college teacher education institution offered in the last five years. Okay, now what is a value added course? So a value added course is a course not a part of the routine curriculum. It is a course which will, as the word says, it adds value addition to the student for placement. So if in my beard curriculum, say there is no course on open educational resources, digital initiatives in education, happiness quotient, MS Excel, or say if I'm taking a, a B.Ed program and I, I want the students to get more insights into uh, specificities of inclusion, you know, there can be many, many more courses which I can give to the students as a value added course. For instance, I may want my students even to learn a course on data analytics. 
I may want my student to learn the course on animations because I know if they learn this, they will be able to develop good e-content. So such kind of courses, the teachers, the teacher education institutions should provide. Now, very clearly as it says, you have to offer these value added courses. These are never given by the university. We will have to offer these courses. We will have to prepare a brochure and course content with its course learning outcomes. Okay. Now, value added courses, what are the basic norms of value added courses? They should be at least of 30 contact hours. So you can offer say on the timetable one or two periods per week throughout a semester, one value added course, or maybe more than one value added course. Secondly, you cannot fix a value added course for all the students. You have to give them options. So you say create five, six, seven value added courses, and you give students these options. They should not be a part of the curriculum. Actually, they should be outside the curriculum and they should, the purpose is they lead to the overall development of the student. Value added courses are generally zero credit courses. They are non-credit courses. So very clearly the SOP says these courses are not a part of the syllabus or any syllabus, any course which is a part of the syllabus cannot be counted as a value added course. Next is 1.2.3. You have to give the percentage of students who are enrolled in these value added courses in last five years. So the data template is also given. So you can fill this, okay? The year, so last five years you are giving. So supposing you are going to go for NAC uh, in 2024, then you give it for 1920, 2021, 2022, 22, 23, 23, 24. Five years data you have to give. Again, how does this formula help us? the more number of students will be enrolled in various value added courses, the better one will score in terms of percentage. So it should not be that if you have 100 students in one year, so 500 students in five year, years in your college and only 30 have taken value added course, then you will score less. So one should keep a benchmark that for smaller size institutions, it is easier to handle that every student takes at least one value added course once in the complete program duration. Har bacha jo hai, wo kam se kam ek value added course jo hai, wo apne do saal ke course mein kar sakta hai, char saal ka hai, to usme do courses kar sakta hai. Ye internal designing hum apne aap kar sakte hai. And these are what, it, what was meant in the 1.1.1, uh, that how do you evolve your uh, institutional level curricula. Now, what is important here is you have to also give them a course completion certificate. So once a student takes a 30 hour course, you have to conduct some test assessment and then give them a certificate. 1.2.4 students are encouraged to undergo self-study courses both online or offline mode. So here you can add self-study courses like online courses available on Swayam, Coursera, edX, or any offline courses like small certification courses, small training programs, where the teacher is not required, it is self-paced. So those study hours, own time study hours and own time work also have to be provided in the timetable. Generally, we say we have to put it on timetable and self-study will be done at home. No, you have to provision this in the timetable. If the student is enrolled for a MOOC, put the time on the timetable this period and put a designated teacher to see that the students are working or checking in the progress. You don't have to be with them, but you can put a tutorial period to take or under a mentor-mentee session, 
you can just see whether the progress is going fine or you can just have a discussion with the children what have you learned say in two sessions or three sessions or four sessions of this course also you have to give the facilities in the library so the students should be enroll or have access to self study courses through the library there have to be spaces in the library where they can you know sit and do these courses give them very good high speed wifi connectivity and computer lab facility and also give them guidance this is very important our role give them academic advice and guidance on how they can successfully complete self study courses both online and offline so again please refer the sop and it says you have to attach these relevant documents then next metric it covers 1.2.5 the percentage of students who have completed over the last 5 years so again the formula helps you wisely make a decision to get the students enrolled in at least one self study course throughout the duration these few academic planning decisions have to be taken by the institute one vac one self study course so we have to see that ultimately every student is doing something like this and it is also taking well care of the metric 1.3 is curriculum enrichment metric number 1.3.1 curriculum of the institution provides opportunities for students to acquire and demonstrate knowledge skills values and attitudes related to varying learning areas this is a qualitative metric to be answered every curricular trust in not more than 100 words what you have to upload whatever you will write you have to support a documentary evidence in claim of the activity the geo tagged photographs and any other information that you would like to provide on this okay so say let's take any one we i will take example of any one there are four aspects they are covering in 1.3.1 how are you helping the student teacher to develop a holistic understanding of the field of teacher education then the skills that are required in their specialization at different levels of school education how the students are able to demonstrate their competencies and how are you giving them opportunities to handle these life skills that is emotional intelligence critical thinking power of negotiation communication collaboration etc so this is very descriptive but it can be done through planning events and activities in the classroom or beyond the classroom 1.3.2 how do does the institution familiarize student with the diversities in the school system whether indian school system or international and then helping them to develop a comparative perspective so three things to be kept in mind through the curriculum how are we teaching the student the diverse school system or the diversities in the school system say in terms of the education boards the education curriculum pedagogical practices different types of learners uh how are they to be catered how are these being catered in the international level and then drawing comparisons to bring out best practices so these are all the activities we should do in this we can give projects we can give uh some presentations we can hold student seminars we can do some kind of report writing we can do some debates we can do poster presentations so many things we can do under metric 1.3.2 qualitative metric okay and of course during internships this can be very nicely handled 
by giving them experience through diverse type of school systems like a mainstream school system, a special school system, an inclusive school system, rural schools, urban schools. So this kind of diverse diversity, they will learn very well. 1.3.3 is again a qualitative metric. How the institution is providing the students to derive professionally relevant understanding and consolidate these, the keyword is whatever understanding they are gaining, how do they consolidate these in the wide range of curriculum experiences provided during their TEP? Okay, so whatever they are learning in the institution, how are they connecting it outside the institution. What kind of opportunities we are giving them for this? Are we giving them some case studies? Are we giving them, if you are running a good morning assembly, are you giving them an opportunity to organize such kind of things in school? Are they going to the, is there a social connect program where they are going to the villages? Are you creating some study circles where they engage with other B.Ed. or B.L.Ed. colleges to consolidate what they have learned together collaboratively? Are you putting them on some kind of summer internships? So these are few. Uh, things we can do under this metric. The last indicator is 1.4, which is feedback system. It has two metrics, 1.4.1. What is the mechanism? This metric asks you, what is the mechanism in place for obtaining structured feedback on the curriculum? semester wise from various stakeholders. So this metric is asking us to tell the mechanism. Do you get some surveys filled? Do you organize open houses? Do you organize open forums? So what is the mechanism? But it is something which is structured. It should be given as a documentary evidence to NAC. So you can have through the IQAC, you can have these structured feedbacks and they have to be specifically on curriculum. This feedback is not to ask how's the infrastructure, how is this? You can mold the questions because everything in the institution then finally comes back to the curriculum. So try to have a questionnaire which gives you overall feedback also and a segment very clearly on feedback on the curriculum. Okay, and this has to be done for every semester. So it should be taken from students, teachers, employers, alumni, and the schools, practice teaching schools. So you have to upload your sample filled feedback forms and then 1.4.1 is collection and the weightage you can see is six, but it's not important just to collect it. It is also important to analyze this feedback collected and take appropriate actions. So we have to in 1.4.2, it is expected that we prepare for every stakeholder a feedback analysis report, which has to be duly signed and signatured by the principal. And then what is the follow-up action of the institution on the feedback to improve the curricular aspects? And this should be put. So NAC will give us score based on all these five. But we should try to be on A. We should collect the feedback. We should do the action taken. It should be on the website. It should be analyzed. And let's not go to these lower levels where 
like e feedback was not taken or feedback was just collected or it was just analyzed the key word here is it should have a action taken that is very important so the sops are also given here what all things we have to attach and uh, i'll come to the conclusion slide now i know you have all been very patiently hearing and i'm uh, sorry for that yeah. of delaying it but it was a long topic so the conclusion dear friends is that for or some pointers which we must keep in mind is that wherever we are answering for qualitative matrices do not just waste those 500 words for just writing anything or something which is very insignificant first collect the documents that you have see the processes and then make that paragraph of 500 word so verbal descriptions have to be very very brief and every line should have a documentary evidence so we should not boast or give any false data only give the correct data in the nac ssr because incorrect data or false data that cannot be validated either through dvv process or through peer team visit it will lead to disqualification or a penalty so do not do something which you do not practice and if you want it to come in the ssr then practice next important thing is please adhere to the time specifications that are given by nac timelines are very important as we have already discussed a lapse of time will take us out from the cycle or delay the processes of accreditation nac does not say send hard copies so everything is completely an online submission it is very important to read the manual the sops the terms the glossary anywhere you have confusion please read the ma the nac manual and there should be lot of i think in house discussions on the nac manual also in the uh, teacher education institution uh also as i have already mentioned once you know that you are going to put in your papers for iiqa on the nac portal please be prepared that within 45 days the ssr also has to be submitted इसीलिए आई आई क्यू ए को तब तक सबमिट ना करें जब तक एस एस आर आपकी नियरली रेडी ना हो एंड फाइनली फ्यू थिंग्स विच आई फील आर इम्पॉर्टेंट टू रिवील यूर इज दैट वेन एवर वी आर रिपोर्टिंग एनी थिंग इन फाइनेंसिस वी कंसिडर द फाइनेंशियल ईयर फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अप्रैल टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मे ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर ईयर फॉर पब्लिकेशन डेटा for one year publication data is considered as calendar year first january to 31st december and for all other metrics wherever you know where the finances are not involved or publication is not involved the data capturing format takes the data for academic year academic year which starts say from as per the university say it starts from august to july or whatever it is and wherever it says data is only required for one year specifically one year it means it is last completed academic year so with this i uh, uh, wind up the session thank you so much uh, for patient hearing thank you ji thank you thank you ma'am thank you for this very informative as well as thank you ma'am in session and definitely you. for the teacher education institutions the session will be the game changer for the nac assessment process great thank you ma'am thank you sir we have some a few questions over here yes thank you ma'am the chat box some questions are there yes regarding the aqar filling the the question from the dr 
Manminder Kaur is there. The yeah. question is like that uh, uh, they have the they have to fill in the AQAR 2021, and mm. in that uh, they have to uh, fill the information with geotag photos. But uh, yes. uh, in 2021, they doesn't have the uh, photographs with the geotag. So what will do regard this? Uh, sir, uh, there is a way in which we can put our queries to the NAC online. So it is always good that we put this question to the NAC. We should not use our brain. We should not go into different ideas on how we will get the photographs. We should put this question, madam. Uh, uh, we should put this question to the NAC portal that we are in the process of filling our AQAR. And due to the pandemic, the events were held online and no field work could have been done. And therefore, will geotag photographs be exempted? They will revert to you within, I think they revert within 48 hours, two days they revert. Yeah. That answer you keep as a screenshot in your folder. And that is a documentary evidence that NAC has permitted. If NAC does not permit it, then like right now we are all on screen. So on screen photo, if the principal is certifying, okay, that this was an online event during the pandemic, yeah. I don't think there will be any problem in this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And then uh, one more question is that regarding the uh, value added course, that uh, question is from the uh, Gosal, Mr. Gosal, Mr. Gosal is there. And the question is that how to design the curriculum of uh, value added courses? So uh, I would like to congratulate you for asking this question. Uh, it is just like uh, the course that we have. We will, uh, firstly, we have to decide I'll tell you a very simple thing. Uh, what you can do is that please see the kind of skill sets that are required for teachers today. So the structured feedback which you may have taken from the teachers, uh, from the schools, say most of the teacher education institutions, whatever they are giving, there is some kind of a requirement from the school principals. And maybe our through our curriculum, the teachers the student teachers are not getting prepared. So firstly, you identify this, this pool of courses. You can also refer to a lot of courses that the other college SSRs have. That also gives a lot of idea. Especially colleges which have AAA grade, I'm sure uh, even your college can give a lot of guidance to the uh, other colleges on this. So the course has to be designed in the same way. It should have course objectives. It should have course outcomes. It should have a small description of the course. What is this course about? Or as we call it a catalog description. It should be divided into units. It should have certain activities and assessment. Yeah. And it should be mapped to your it, it need not be mapped, sorry, to your uh, PLO because this is not directly from the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I may want like, I if I want my teachers to learn today how to, how to prepare an open educational resource, this is not there in my curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I can actually go through certain uh, way or I may like to do a value added course on uh, like in teacher education, it is there, but in some maybe other branch, if you know, uh, a kind of a value added courses on uh, meditation, mindfulness, full course. Mm -hmm. So a value added course need not always be a theory course. It can also be a practical course. Okay. So it uh, answering to Madam's uh, uh, sir's question, I think is that uh, it is the same structure, but you have to define it. Uh, just like you do it for the other courses. And we have to prepare a brochure. And this brochure should be available to the student at the time of induction program. What are the courses available? 
okay thank you ma'am thank you very thank you, much sir. for this uh, a very informative and uh, uh, eye opening session and definitely the information and the the information given by you definitely uh, very helpful for the nac process as well as the aqar submission as well as the ssr writing thank you once again thank you sir thank you uh, i request to dr professor ab patil sir to have the vote of thanks professor dr ab patil sir good afternoon to all on behalf of azad college of education satara maharashtra i extend a really hearty vote of thanks to today's session speaker honorable professor dr tania gupta madam who spared time from her busy schedule to grace the national level faculty development program in this session madam focused on important key aspects of nac assessment and accreditation process and also key indicators of first criteria curric curricular aspects the way in which madam explained this was extraordinary today we have an opportunity to hear you uh, hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future nac accreditation process unnecessary madam your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path regarding nac assessment and accreditation process once again thanks madam for your informative and enlightening presentation thank you sir i would like to i would like to express our deep gratitude to the honorable principal dr vandana nalawde madam azad college of education satara for her presence in this session i would like to thank coordinator professor dr vinay dondge of fdp and also thanks to iqsc coordinator dr amit kumar gagre i would like also thanks to council for teacher education foundation delhi ncr chapter chapter chairperson professor dr satyendra gupta and secretary general dr sanjay kumar for giving this opportunity to conduct fdp to our college i would also thanks to all my staff members and technical staff for their cooperation i thank all the teacher educators from different states for their enthusiastic participation in this session finally thanks to all people who helped either directly or indirectly to make today's session successful once again thanks to all thank you ma'am thank you very much so any here on camera one humble request to all the participants please on your cameras because we have to take one photograph a humble request to all the participants please uh, on your cameras mobile cameras or the screen cameras screenshot no sir one question sir please hello hello ah uh, yes sir Uh, sir uh, my question uh, how collect uh, the uh, audio how the how collect the audio or our uh, guest lectures yeah participations today is the very very nice uh, uh, information uh, by the madam so uh, regarding the nac so please i want the recording of madam views yes uh, actually yes sir we will provide the uh, ppt as well as we have recorded this lecture and this lecture will be available on our college youtube channel sir yes sir 
Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, is, is possible to my uh, our uh, mail ID send you? Yes, sir, no problem. Thank you very much, sir. It's nice program, sir. And congratulations, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Wonderful program. Sir, we have the WhatsApp group. We will uh, share all the necessary information as well as the PPT on our group, sir. Okay. Yes, Sanjay Sarji, let us stop today, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I also did the uh, yesterday. Uh, Sanjay, sir, Dr. Sanjay Kumar Sarji. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is the time to close now. Yes, no sir. Problem, sir. So once again, thank you. thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Continue with the second criteria. Thank you once again, Tanya Madam Ji, for your valuable lecture. Once again, thank you very much.